Hi ladies and gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for your previous likes, comments and subscriptions to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, why not click on that button and ring the bell so you can get notifications whenever I'm dropping videos on the channel, which is daily. And now on to the topic of this video, and it is one that a lot of people have been waiting for for a while. Today we are going to be talking about combat speed. Now I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is not going to be a quick video. Uh, combat speed is one of the most complex elements of the game. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible and go through this video as quickly as possible. So first off, to get us started, we're going to go into the menu and into game instructions and then to combat rules and then attack order. This is where you're going to find information from the game developers on combat speed. So in the battle, both the enemy and my attack order is in, in accord, accordance with the squad's combat speed. The combat speed of the squad depends on factors such as heroes, soldiers and buildings. I will go through each of those elements with you in a minute. When the squad attack, it will give priority to the combat skill first, then followed by a normal attack, which is what we call basic attacks by the troops. And finally, a pursuit skill. So that would be um, a passive skill is how they word it in the game. As shown in the picture, the pioneer, that means the front row, with 30 combat speed on the offensive side, will attack first at the beginning of the round. He will use combat skill first, followed by a normal attack and pursuit skill. It, it will be cast at the end. So in this diagram here, they show us that on the attacking side, front row, that hero has a combat speed of 30. So they are going first. Then the other two rows have combat speeds of 22 and 18. The opponent has a row that has a combat speed of 25. So that row goes second. Then the 22 is the third highest, that goes third. The middle row with 18 has the fourth highest, so that goes fourth. And then the defending side's middle row with 15 is fifth. And the back row with only 10 is sixth. So combat speed denotes the order in which the squads attack. That is basically it. So you can have, a back, if the back row squad has the highest combat speed, it will attack first. Now, the next example down here is if both, if two squads have the same highest or the same combat speed, then the game prioritizes the attacker over the defender. So in this scenario, you can see here that two squads have the same highest combat speed and it's the attacker that gets to go first. The attacker's squad with 30 goes first. The defender's squad with 30 goes second. So attacker has priority when the combat speeds are the same. So that is what the combat rules denote in the instructions. Now, I just wanna to go to a battle report. And if we go into a battle report, obviously just select any round, you can go to unit attributes and combat speed is denoted on this bottom section here. Now, if you click on either the defender or the attacker's attributes, for combat speed, it will always, it's split into a maximum of three different sections, building, equipment, and technology. There are only one type of building that impacts combat speed. I will show you that in a minute. Now for equipment, equipment doesn't just denote the combat speed that you are achieving from the gear that you have equipped. It is also the uh, combat speed from your hero. So. It's a bit of a funny one. I don't know why they don't have a separate line for hero like they do in the other attributes, but in combat speed, equipment accounts for the speed being given to your squad by the hero and your gear. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. And then technology, you can see, is giving 50 combat speed, and I'll talk about technology as well. So let's look at buildings. And first off, we have these so they are the encamp the enhancement camps so they are here cavalry archers footmen each three of these buildings when maxed at level 25 will give you 250 extra combat speed so they are the same it is the same bonus for each troop type footmen um the same 250 so enhancement camps are part of the strategy group and you have to unlock the garrison hall all three war rooms and then you have to unlock the supply oh 
needs to come out of that menu. Then you will unlock the supply station. So when you've got your uh, when you've got your footman war room, at, war room at level 23, you can unlock your supply station. Then you need to get your castle up to C25. And once you've got your supply station to level 25, that unlocks the spy agency. Once that's maxed at level 25, you will then unlock all three enhancement camps. All of these buildings require crystal. It will take you quite a lot of time to accumulate enough crystal to upgrade all of these buildings. But once you do, they will all give you a buff of 250 combat speed. So they, these are the only buildings that give you additional combat speed. Next, let's talk about gear. So as you can see, this is part of the reason why cavalry have uh, are such the meta troop type in the game because their gear gives an extra 30 combat speed. These four elements, the amulet, the accessory weapon and helmet will all give 30 plus combat speed to give you an increase of 120. For the wanderer gear for archers and the dreadnought gear for footmen, these are only giving 90 extra combat speed from their amulets, accessories and weapons. The helmets on their sets do not give extra combat speed. If we look at dragon gear, the amulet, the accessory and the weapon each give an extra 35 combat speed. So dragon gear only actually gives you 105 extra combat speed. Still not as high as your cavalry gear. So these, this is why if people have wondered why, uh, for instance, the Beast Queen, uh, Rosen Immortal or the Brave Rosen Immortal combinations with just gold cavalry gold gear have still managed to beat dragon gear. One of the reasons is because actually if you do two direct combos against each other, the combo with the cavalry gear will still get their attacks off first because they're getting a 15 extra combat speed from the normal cavalry gear compared to the Legion that has the full set of dragon gear. So that's one thing to highlight. The other thing is I haven't covered the Immortal or Tyrant gears. Again, both of those sets give an extra 90 combat speed. So you don't gain any additional benefit from those sets, the Tyrant and Immortal sets in terms of combat speed. So that is that is how gear can give you. And obviously this is all gold, gold rated. If the lower the gear, the lower the rate, the, the boosts. Let's talk about heroes. So included in that score on the report will be the boost that you're getting from a hero. And all of these heroes on the screen right now have additional combat speed as part of their sixth skills. So Bulwark, the Judge, the Volunteer, Cicero, Windwalker, Army Breaker, all six of these heroes will give a plus 20 combat speed from their sixth skill. Demon Smear and Rogue give plus 30. Skybreaker and Divine Arrow, yes, Divine Arrow, gives plus 40 and then we have five heroes that give plus 100 ebony knight lionheart beast queen immortal and the brave two give a plus 120 which is warlord and the lawman and then you can see this hero down the bottom far ahead of everyone else rose and blade gives plus 180 combat speed to the troops in her squad so those are these are all the heroes in the game that are going to give you additional combat speed so these are the ones that could potentially give you an edge in battles where they are giving you they are they are having higher rated combat speed and obviously if you're up against Rosen then it's almost impossible to beat that but there is one thing which we'll talk about in a minute so these are all the these heroes if you see for instance um, a, a gear combat speed gear which is plus uh, 220 for instance that and it's a cavalry squad that will be a hundred plus 120 from the gear and then for instance it could be plus 100 from Lionheart or any of these five cavalry heroes that are here that is when you will have plus 220 combat speed from your gear so I hope that's kind of cleared up where you're getting those figures in terms of um, the building speed and the gear speed now I want to talk about um, other elements that heroes impact on combat speed. So we're just going to uh, come out of this and go back into that. There are also some specific heroes that have individual skills and so not allocated on their 
on their sixth skill, but actually dynamic skills, um, either their second, fifth, or eighth skill, which has an impact on combat speed. So first off is Rosen. So Rosen has, not only does she have this massive boost on her sixth skill, but her fifth skill also increases battle speed of all friendly squads by 100 for the first three turns. And it's a prep skill, so this will activate. So this will only be applicable on the first three turns, guys, okay? So that's Rosen. Then we have the Brave. Now, the Brave is an interesting one. Not only is he giving an extra 100 plus 100 on his on his sixth skill to himself but his eighth skill tundra soul has minus gives minus 100 combat speed debuff to all three random enemy squads within effective range so if you put brave on your front or middle row in a combination this will debuff all of his opponent's squads and that that will slow down their combat speed by minus 100 so just that is a debuff for, for combat speed. Next up is Hunk. And Hunk has on his eighth skill a buff for his own squad. So first six turns, all friendly squads have up to 37 increased combat speed. So that will only be, that's again, that's a dynamic skill that's only happening for the first six turns. Datch Tengri on his second skill I've got Datch in here somewhere. There he is. Datch's second skill. Now, it's a combat skill. It is a 100% chance, but it can be silenced and suppressed. So this is not guaranteed. Again, it's dynamic. Sometimes it will happen. Sometimes it won't. If it does activate, it will reduce one enemy squad's combat speed by 38 and give an additional 38 combat speed to two friendly squads. So that is going to have an impact on your combat speed in battle when this skill triggers. So these are the four kind of um, dynamic chance-based skills. And then we have, uh, which relate to actual combat speeds. And then there is one other hero in the game that has a combat speed related skill, and that is Sakura Blossom. And this is one of the reasons why I rate her, well, this is pretty much the main reason I rate her the best SX1 hero. Her Senbon Sakura skill two, for the first two turns, two random squads will move first. So this skill, ignore everything else you've just heard about combat speed. If you are in a battle against Sakura, then this skill will trump all of those other factors. This will make two of her random squads will move first for the first two turns. So this is... This is the skill to trump all other skills, and that is why Sakura is such a key hero. And if you put her with Rose and Blade as well, they are real, um, you know, they are just, they are cutthroat heroes that can really do so much damage in the first three turns of the battle. So that is, that is all of the heroes that have skills that will impact on combat speed in battles as well. So I hope you kind of, uh, you follow in all of that, guys. The last element on that list is research. So in Master Warfare Research, we have a section that does impact on combat sp combat speed, and it is this one here, which has Agile, Quick Shots, and Giddy Up in it. And if you max each of these for, it's one section for each troop type, these will give an additional 50 combat speed for each of your troop types. So Agile is for Footmen, Quick Shots is for Archers, Giddy up is for your cavalry. So that is where the extra 50% combat speed is coming on reports from for research. It's coming from those sections in Master Warfare. Now let's have a look at a couple of, obviously there's quite a lot. So there are a lot of different factors that impact on combat speed. And it can be extremely confusing when you're watching a battle report uh, to follow what's happening because you have obviously set amounts that heroes are buffing combat speed. You have some heroes that have dynamic skills uh, that are being applied during the battle. You have other heroes like Sakura that are just completely overriding all of those elements. So I want to show you a couple of battle reports now um, where we have some different things going on. So first off, 
let's go in and I think it's this one. So I've got some reports from the weekend. Yes, so this first battle report is going to be Warlord, Roku, Living Saints, so the Three Sisters combo up against um, the Beast Queen, Rosen, Immortal combo. So you will have on your reports, if we look at the attributes, you can see the front row of the of, with Warlord on actually has higher combat speed because he is giving an extra 120 from his sixth skill while Beast Queen is just giving an extra 100 on this equipment section. Then obviously Rosen has the highest with 600 because and you're getting 300 on the equipment so 180 from Rosen and 120 from the gold cavalry gear while the opponent is just getting 120 uh, because Roku does not have any additional combat speed so all of that 120 is from the gear and the same on the back row, uh, Living Saint just gives a hundred, does not give any extra combat speed. That 120 is from the gear, but Immortal does have an extra 100 combat speed from his six skill. So what you're going to see, but what you're going to see in this battle is remember that Rosen's fifth skill gives the other two an extra 100 combat speed. So if you just were looking at the report right now, you would think that, uh, Rosen would go first, then Warlord would go, then Beast Queen third, Immortal fourth, Roku fifth, Living Saint sixth. But because you have that, for the first three turns, you have that extra 100 combat speed from Rosen's fifth skill, you will see for the first three turns that it'll actually be Rosen first, then Beast Queen second, Immortal third, then Warlord fourth, Roku fifth, Living Saint 6. So let's get into the video, guys. So before the battle, we have the tower hitting the troops. Then we have all the status skills activating, all the prep skills. And here we go. Turn 1, that was Rosen's luck set first. Beast Queen second. Immortal third. Because they're benefiting from that 100 extra combat speed. And then you see Warlord go fourth, Roku fifth, and Living Saint sixth. And it's going to stay that way for the next two turns as well. So we're going to speed it up a little bit. And then what you're going to see from turn four is that skill from Rosen is going to have finished. And then it will revert to what you would initially have thought from looking at the figures pre-battle, which will be that Rosen will go first, Warlord will go second. So there's Warlord going second, then Beast Queen goes third, Immortal goes fourth. And then Roku will go fifth and Living Saint sixth. So we'll just watch that one more time on turn five. So there we go. That's, that's Rosen going first, Warlord second, Beast Queen third, Immortal fourth. And that's Immortal's passive skill activating after his basic attack. And then we've lost Roku's squad but then he Roku would have gone fifth and living saint sixth so that is what's going on if you ever watch the sequence with these two um, formations and of course what you've got to remember is that every time you have a different formation uh, you have a different scenario of of heroes having different impacts from both their dynamic skills and their base combat speeds then you're going to see different sequences of attacks from the six different legions in the video. Okay, so that's ended in def with that video's ended. Now I just want to show you one more example, and I'm going to use uh, the attack that I did. Um, shall we use this one?
let's use So there were, um, the other thing to think about is also um, is the debuff from Brave. So he is giving minus 100. Uh, let's see this one. Yeah. Okay, so... In this battle, we have my Brave Avalanche Son of Ragmar combo up against attacking Beast Queen Rosen Immortal combo. So you would expect to see Rosen, Beast Queen, and Immortal attacking first because they are um, they have that buff from Rosen's fifth skill. But in this instance, Brave's eighth skill is cancelling that out. And he also has a plus 100 buff. So what we're going to see is actually that Rosen will still go first. And here she does. So that was Rosen, but she was disarmed. And then Brave goes second because he has a plus 100. Beast Queen is going third. Immortal is going fourth. And then Avalanche is going fifth. Ragnar is going sixth. So, because if you remember, so Rosen just has that extra com pure combat speed anyway, and then Brave actually has the same amount as Immortal and Beast Queen because his 100 debuff is cancelling out the 100 buff from Rosen, plus Immortal, Beast Queen, and Brave all have plus 100 boosts on their sixth skills, and Brave is the attacker. So that's why in this sequence you see Rosen first, then Brave, then Beast Queen third, Immortal fourth, Avalanche fifth, Ragnar sixth. So hopefully you've seen that in, in sequence now in this video. And that's kind of basically everything about combat speed that I can that I can talk about. I think. You, like I have to say, there's no. You're going to see lots of different sequences in terms of when squads go. But I hope I've in this video I've been able to explain to you as simply as possible the reasons why there are different sequences uh, in the game. It from because of combat speed and the different elements that affect it. So for any of you that are in lower levels of the game, it's really really important to get that gold gear for the extra combat speed. It's really important to push your buildings. And, and make as much crystal as you can so you can unlock your enhancement camps as quickly as possible. Work up, get up to level 25, unlock that level 25 institute so you can get master warfare and work on that master warfare until you're getting this extra combat speed because combat speed is key in a battle because it allows you to obviously A, both attack your opponent and reduce their troop number, but also then um, give them any debuffs that your skills have which can also then obviously have a negative effect on them and that is why for instance the com the rosen uh, the beast queen rosen immortal combination is so good because it is doing a lot of damage and getting ahead in the battle in the earlier stages um and why for instance again like sakura rosen spectral reaper is so good it's doing so much damage in the first few turns of the battle that the opponent can't catch up in the remaining four or five rounds. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do click on that okay. And uh, I'm uh, on that like, sorry. I hope it's, uh, I'm sorry it's been such a long video, but I wanted to cover this topic in detail so that I could hopefully explain it in as much detail as possible. And um, if you have enjoyed this video, I'd be interested to hear your comments about how you get on with combat speed and uh, what you think about it. Maybe I've missed something uh, in this video. I'd be really pleased to hear from you and if you could please share this video and my channel in your alliance chat province chat and through line whatsapp fiber discord whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game that would be very much appreciated thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon